Territories and Comox First Nation, and we went to that group in the privilege of living on this land and the gift of working with their children. Um, I'd like to call this meeting to order uh, and ask if anyone will move to adopt the agenda. SJ, thank you. Thank you. Um, you did much presentations. Thank you. That's so great. I'm happy to have you here. Thank you. It's, uh, I feel it's a privilege to be here. And uh, I want to say I'm not here alone. I know we have our, our crowd here, but I have a supporting cast and I want to really gratefully acknowledge that both Tree Murdoch and of course, you know, Molly, who is here for the last one, have joined me. And these are key players too. Tree and I work side by side on all of our climate change accountability reporting, our work around operations, senior minute system operations, so this is all stuff that we do collaboratively, and much of what is up here is Tree's work as well as mine. And Molly is in the fold here too, because as a, as a key member of the Ops Management Leadership Team, she's gonna inherit. And this is great. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna make some promises. Somebody get Bear witness to your mm -hmm. yeah. you know, some of these things. Yeah. So, <laughs> sorry, there's the bus tracks right there. <laughs> I said, next slide, please. So we did a we did an update in February. That was really the first kick at a good discussion around where are we going for greenhouse gas emission reduction and what is our environmental footprint. We talked a little bit about the, the world of operations perceptions, virgin the media. These are the things we love. We get super jazzed, a big flood. A door kicked in, maybe even a fire. We deal with that right away. But really, the department is much more than that. And we spend a heck of a lot of time on long range planning. We think about the future. We have to think about the future because change takes a long time to affect. And the decisions around replacing equipment and things have to be many years in the making. And they have to be decisions with when you don't have enough dollars, have to be based on uh, data and the best uh, available information that we have. So um, we really deal with urgent media, but a lot of long-term planning, and this very much falls in the long-term planning of the industry. Okay, just scroll through these quickly. So these are the these are uh, a summary for strategic priority three, a little bit of work to change from last time, organizational stability, environmental stewardship, fostering environmental stewardship being the goal. Before it was actions, now it's key results. Reduce carbon emissions and environmental footprint. And I like key result because it's let's do something. Mm -hmm. So it influences our work directly. So these are the things we'll talk about why GHG emissions matter, targets, performance highlights, some of the stuff we're doing, our priorities, things coming in the next year. Um, we breeze through a bunch of this. There's a lot of info. We sort of live and breathe it. So I'm going to refresh on some of those slides from last time. Yeah, we care about this a lot because GHGs track heat in the atmosphere, thickening the air's blanket, and making us warmer. Climate change is a long-term shift in temperatures and weather patterns, and, and it's gone away from 
uh, global warming because the cooling side of climate change is real as well. It's all about us, that we've caused this by burning fossil fuels. Consequences, this is where it gets really interesting. Um, intense droughts, water scarcity, severe fires, rising sea levels, flooding, algae before the rice. I think we had all of those this last year um, and 2023 is not done. I went to the Climate Leadership Symposium put on by the province in October, first one I've been to in person since 2019. It was great. Before it was always about how are we gonna reduce greenhouse gases? The first thing they talked about in this one is how are we gonna adapt to climate change? Incredible nice. shift, really important. Reducing greenhouse gases, definitely important as well because it's all tied in. But that climate adaption part is super important because these things affect our facilities in a great way or in a significant way, not a great way. Okay, um, roadmap to 2030. This is uh, an important document. I have read it. It's about 80 pages. You can find it online. And they say right at the beginning, we need to take urgent action together to reduce the impacts of climate change, build a strong economy has never been clearer. Right? They're very much affected by this past year. The Intergovernment Panel on Climate Change, so cold red for humanity, is the biggest issue facing the world right now. And uh, last one in there. So the, this Clean BC Roadmap 2030 is the province's plan. And that's why it should be important to us because it's driving our <coughs> Next one, please. Covers eight pathways that are all important. So you can just breeze through them pretty fast here. Low carbon energy, transportation buildings, communities, industry, forests, agriculture, aquaculture, and fisheries, and negative emissions technology. So how we capture carbon, things like that. But really, it is much broader than what they used to talk about, which is just how we burn less natural gas. Okay, next one, please. So baseline and targets, really, really important for us to actually have targets and have baseline information. The province has gratefully provided some of the baseline information for us. Next one, please, three. And these are the targets from the province, 2025, 16%, 40% of 2030, 16 and 80. And basically 2050 is a net zero time, right? Where are we doing or how are we doing as a province? really poorly, right? And that's what they came out and said again, we're not doing well, we're down a percent from 2007. A lot of growth in the province, tremendous growth, right? And that doesn't matter. It's like our school district, our baseline 2007, they don't care that we have 3,000 more kids or five more facilities, just look after it. Okay, next please. How's Canada doing? This is really interesting because this slide is like uh, two days old. Um, the Auditor General for the country came out and said, we're not going to make it, right? Because I've looked at the numbers and it's not good. So this is this is uh, millions of tons of CO2, okay? So that, uh, yeah, like this, these are megatons, right? So now the, this, um, so this blue is our net zero pathway that we have to follow as a country. Um, the legislation's the dotted top line. Um, some of the programs are developing might get us down there. Uh, what, we've, what we've announced as the goal is that 40% by 2030. And as a country, we're simply not gonna make it, right? So what does that mean for us? And I think over time, as the pressure increases, there'll be more pressure on school districts and all public sector organizations to spend the money and make the change. Um, and it will become a priority that we're, that's foisted upon us. So this is where we want to be ahead of this curve. And I think we look at some of the things coming, you know, I feel relatively comfortable about how we as a district are doing next one for the street. These two really important metrics. We talked about them last time as well. There's the absolute, which is how much carbon are we burning and which turns into GHGs in tons. That's an absolute number. And then our energy intensity is a relative number. So that's where we take the amount of basically pollution we create and divide that by our area to figure out how bad are we per square meter, 
or you know, what's our energy intensity? We sort of spin it around and go, we are, we are as a system, we have an average, but some buildings might be uh, a number that's 300 per square meter, and some will be 60 per square meter. We have an average in around 150. And that is a great equalizer because we can look at a big building and say, how does this big building perform relative to the small building? Is it great? Is it lousy? Some of our lousy small buildings, we're not going to fuss about a whole bunch because they don't actually burn relatively a lot of electricity. So we don't want to put a lot of money in them. So it, has, it helps us guide our thinking. Okay, this is our reporting cycle. Most of the time, an organization will report over a uh, calendar year, but we're going to report over a school year decision made with some of our consultants because the, the, the materials want to meaningful to us as a system. How do we do last school year? How do we project we'll do this coming school year? So we divide into quarters for where we have very significant check ins with um, me and team. And we will report out in November each year, which is good because we don't get the utility data for July and August really through till about October. So we can't, we're always trailing, right? So we can't assess how we've done until we hit this point in the fall. And the, when I say the fine print, about 30 sites. So we essentially look at all of our school sites and admin facilities as well. Okay, three tenths. Yeah, so BEPI or our Building Energy Performance Index, our per square meter. So it's kind of a, I kind of like this slide because it shows us back to 2010, which is when we're collecting information from. We're sitting in the high 150s, and that is our energy intensity per square meter by electricity and natural gas. You can see electricity is almost the same. Uh, the natural gas fluctuates up and down. We were starting to make a little bit of progress around 2018-19. Um, we're down to a uh, of average for the system of 148. We don't actually have to report against this, so we're using this as an internal measure. We've selected our own baseline as the 18-19 year because it's the lowest number we had. We're really doing well the next year at 140, but that's schools were closed for a little while. So that sort of helped the numbers, right? We weren't heating. And then look at the two 162s on there. Those are our two COVID years because we're pounding in ventilation. Increased ventilation is not compatible with energy efficiency. So we're sort of rolled back around to 140. So that's progress for us. But this is going to be our measure tool for when we start talking about energy intensity is our own targeting. <coughs> carbon baseline. We use 2010 as our carbon baseline. We don't have information from 2007. So our number that we use is 2,559 tons of CO2. So that's the number that we have to get down by 40% by 2030, okay? Uh, most of it, look at the big blue in the pie graph there, buildings, right? Heat in the buildings, some transportation, and some paper. Um, paper one don't really want to talk about. We knocked it down a whole bunch, and um, we, we just, it's not worth putting the energy into because of the big issues we have to resolve. Next one, please. Here's where we need to get. Like if you look at our direct fuel combustion, so those are our heating systems. We need to go from 2000 back in 2010 down to about 800. It's a huge reduction, right? Because they are pushing our building numbers within that 40%. It's not even, right? They want our, uh, our natural gas and really you know, and electricity be down to almost 60 and transportation <coughs> down less because they recognize how much tougher that is to me. So we need to get down to somewhere around 1100 from 2559. That's a long gap. If you look at where we are now, though, 2022, we are 2140 or 16% reduction to date. It's pretty good, right? And if you think back to that first. One, the target for 2025, 16%. So we're three years ahead of the target, but we got a ways to go to hit the 2030 target. Next one, please. So those are, we'll, we'll fill in some gaps in here, but you can see we're gonna, we have some significant reductions to make by 2030. Next one, please, three. So energy intensity, 
Um, our eight year goal to drop by from 148, we want to get down to 89. We got to 90, I'd be pretty happy. Um, but you can see, so there's a divide in there, and, and, and this is important because we don't see dropping our electric consumption a lot because what we're going to do is invert the scales. We're going to push it down by doing more LED work, and then we're going to drive it up by electrifying some of our buildings. So we have to offset, and we have to get rid of waste, electric, uh, like all, all this waste load of electricity that we have because we're going to push it up again as we electrify buildings. It's the fuels that we really want to hit. Yeah. I saw on the slide it said, I did say heating, oil, and propane. Do we still have some schools that we are We have propane for modulars. Yeah, no heating oil. We okay. used to have heating oil at Union Bay School. Okay, it was yeah. funny. So that was that one. one. So that okay. while we were able to cancel that contract two years ago. But that's good for the board to be aware of. So as yeah. portables, we're adding our natural gas factor then. No, no natural gas. Well, not natural gas, but propane. Um, we're, we're the most recent ones have been electrifying, but we have lots with propane. Okay. Yeah. So it's like and mini ductless. Keep yeah. Mini money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mini money. <laughs> yeah. <I know>. yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so true. But we so are putting true. in the last one we put in a pad. Okay. 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 So next one, too, please. Okay. This is so now for us to make results, we need to set targets. Something we haven't really done much of in the past. So what we see here is to get our forty. We just want this 1% glide down in electrical, which I really want to push harder in the next year or two. I want that to drop by 10 or 12%, and then watch it creep up, and the natural gas down about 10% a year, right? So this is just showing that uh, fuels, we want to become smaller than the electricity. Next one, please. That's that 40 percent reduction target for Becky to get us down to 89. I love these smooth curves. <laughs> yeah, nice. <laughs> Next one, please. Okay, this is where it gets interesting. So, how, how have we done right against our targets? So, that correction, those are those COVID years, right? They're up, and so we understand why they're up. Now, we pulled it back on track, okay, and we want to follow this curve. Next one, please. Um, so there's electrical. So electrical, yeah, we have again a top here, one more phase. <coughs> Natural gas, good. Okay, making progress. So we're a little below there, we're a little above electricity, and so we're kind of riding the line. Next one, hydro. This is a great slide um, because from the, just the very bottom, 22, 23, to get an equivalent kilowatt. Hour of electricity, uh, cost you 12 cents, right? Five and a half cents for natural gas and 13.3 for propane. Natural gas is a great deal. Okay, okay. I just didn't even hear that. I'm just gonna go blah blah. blah. Yeah, so that that's, is that's why that's do we use good. natural gas in Western Canada? Because it's cheap and it's efficient, and that's been pushed as the solution. As you can see, you look back and look back in 17, 18, three cents. Oh my goodness, right? And the next slide is really interesting. So energy use, so BC Hydro see it's about 40% of the slice there and 60% of the docks, right? Whereas Hydro, your Fortis, nice big part of the on the left high, small piece there, because it's cheap. I said, that is why natural gas is so prevalent. It's plentiful, available, and inexpensive. Next slide. So, how do we do? Well, electricity, yeah, so so, right? Natural gas, good. Um, and 140, we'll take it. Right? We'll take it. Next, please. And here's some of the gaps. I love paper. I don't know what happened. Um, looks like we didn't count for a while, then we caught up. So I, really what you're seeing there is, uh, is the printers disappeared, um, right in the middle there, right around 2018. Josh made a lot of enemies and they said, your printer is gone, that's a great printer. Yeah. And so uh, everybody lost the printer and we went to common photocopiers. Yeah. Saved a lot of paper, right? So those are, those are good things. Uh, buildings, 
transportation. We're really just getting going. Next, please. So bottom line, but this year, 4% reduction. Okay, that's good. Because if you do 4% a year, you're making your targets, right? We and that's overall. So I really, I really like that. We're having to make 10% because we, like everybody else, we have a lot of ground to make up. 4% a year is a really achievable number. And we've had an 18% improvement over 21, 22 because it was so wretched because of COVID. This number at the bottom, including 1.6 million, if we hit our targets, that would be the cumulative savings. If we make the reductions, that's what this organization would save per year in energy costs, or would save cumulatively, sorry, over the next eight years in energy costs. That's a big number, right? And we'll, I'll show you how we get there in a minute. Okay, this is a typical Q sum graph, which is a cumulative summary. The blue line across the top is uh, let's do nothing. Let's stick the whole bury our heads in the sand and just continue as per normal. Make no investments or no change in culture or behavior. Um, so that's clearly not what, we're, what we want to do. The dotted line down is the target path we should be following, decreasing our e kilowatt hours or our tons of CO2. Next, please. This is what we're doing in green, right? There's COVID blasting us up. Next one. Here's how the math works. So on the right hand side, you can see there's a little dollar sign. So as you go above that, you're getting into savings. When you go below that, you're spending more than you should. So in the line, in that 18, in that, sorry, 21, 22, 22, 23, we spent more than we should have according to our targets and of where we should be because we increased our ventilation so much. As we decrease and start dipping below the do nothing, we start to save money. And those savings are cumulative as we go through the years, you get up to 2030 and be in the vicinity of having saved 1.6 million bucks, which is good. Next, please. Okay, some of the projects we'll go on through. So I'll talk about lighting, feed, and buildings because it's kind of the <laughs> that we are trying to work on. Next, please, Tree. Okay, this is lighting, this very, very busy slide. The two columns there that are the classroom LED and exterior LED, the green all the way down where it says excellent. We've done all our outside lighting. Awesome. Nice. Inside, where really the where we really make the money, the excellent means full schools done, and the none means basically no classrooms. We've done all our gyms, we've done all our shops, all our big spaces, music rooms. There's a lot of schools there in gray where we haven't done classrooms, but we're picking off one or two a year. And we have a plan. Okay, next one. So major actions, methodical full lighting replacement funding request. So we did the previous summer glacier view. This summer they just went by the dam and uh, tender was posted to BC bid today to get all of airport school done. These cost 100 to 150 thousand dollars. Once we get them done, though. We have an immediate savings and return on investment of about five years for us. Okay, uh, still quite, quite a bit of money, but it's great if anyone has a spare hundred grand around us and just like that area. Uh, we have that full inventory of every light in the district, and that is really important. Like we can tell you that at Aspen Park Elementary, we have 620 light fixtures, and they provide this average lighting level, and we measure it at desk height. For students, so that we know what it's like, so we can look in there and go, What's the lighting like in the school? And it drives what our next schools are going to be. You go into the airport, it's a bit dingy, right? It's not very bright. It's a tremendous difference. Um, the other thing is, when we go in and we touch a classroom, we automatically do change all the lights, right? So then our electricians can go into that database, which they have access to. And enter it in there so it you know, keeps our data current. We've updated our technical specs, lots of lunch and learns, learning about stuff, and we've determined our optimal lighting control solutions, which we tested for the second summer, and it was a, a sparkling win, I would say, on this, and we're applying it. Next one. So that's lighting. Um, we're well underway. Uh, BEV, battery electric vehicles, there's our first trades van driven by our lead electrician appropriately. <laughs> uh, we have lots of trepidation around this. The folks were interested. We talked about it and said, mm, not so much Ian, not really interested, like my van. Somebody brought a 2007 van, 
don't want to, you know. But uh, the beauty is, everyone has seen it now. Go, oh, that's really nice. It drives beautifully. The extra weight from the battery, super stable on the road, very torquey. Um, and there's that little thing called preconditioning. So when you plug into the charger, you actually program how you want your vehicle to be when you sit in it at 740 each morning. It will be 20 degrees inside, the windows will be clear, the seat is warm, and the radio is set to the station you want. The back out. That's got a bit of cachet to it as well, right? So this is, uh, this is good. That's the I know, right? I know, right? So all of a sudden, we have a little bit more interest in the vehicles. That's good. And beautifully kitted up. And the, the price is coming down. And I was able to buy this through the Holman Group, which is a provincial purchasing organization. And interestingly, they still haven't canceled the bill. So that was June. I asked four times for the invoice, and don't ask me anymore. So we'll see what happens. You buy another one. Ooh, um, okay, next slide, please. So lean decarbonization study, we talked about this. How do we get from here, a whole bunch of trades vans, to over here, particularly when we're dealing with a lot of a lot of personalities that are, you know, we get we all get ingrained in our ways. I can't do my job unless I have a, you know, so it's 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 change. So the GSE engineering helped us with this. They interviewed a lot of our trade staff, they interviewed us, we provided them with data, figured out how far we sort of drive each day, what kind of vehicles could we use? Very thorough study, 180 pages of joy and reading. Um, and in there though, here's the order in which you should replace your vehicles. Here's the types of vehicles you, you should use. And here's what it's gonna cost. Plus the hydro part is huge. If we have to completely reconfigure our yard, we're chargers. So, so, so a lot, so we, we really just, Tree and I, I would say, when was our last meeting this week? Last week. Last week. Yeah. So it's just finished. Big that review. Was the you had a grant for that. Yeah. yeah. So we got yeah. a grant yeah. from the CDC. Yeah. Yeah. The study was about 24 grand. Yeah. yeah. We got a $19,000 grant, which I think is a win. Yeah. We got the check. Um, cool. Last week. Two weeks nice. ago. Like that was great. So um, vehicle purchases. <coughs> So big transition and seeing with the gas being going, I think we bought our last internal combustion in a vehicle. He didn't cry, but it was close, right? <laughs> like, it's, it's, it's big. It's really big. The home group, which took a long time to get connected with them because the provincial procurement program has shifted significantly. Um, and it's, it's important to be part of that. And next, please. So this is. This is really is a Coles Notes version. They gave us three scenarios we could follow. They go business as usual. Do what you do in my internal combustion. Keep going. Uh, of course, that's not on there. Um, high operating expenses, 9.6 million total cost ownership over the next 10 years. Or we could follow the provincial guidelines for electrification. Ten and a half million bucks in ownership cost is high because we're going to be buying all this charging infrastructure in the shortest amount of time. We have fifty percent reduced emissions by twenty thirty and one hundred percent by twenty thirty seven. Um, instead of spending one hundred fifty a year on vehicles, we have to spend two fifty. In the scenario three, electrification based on budget, we have about one hundred fifty thousand local capital, not eight point nine million total cost of ownership. 28% uh, emission reduction by 2030 and 100% by 2045. Those are good numbers, right? So this is, uh, the, what I like about this is it tells us that what we're doing is okay, keep moving as you're going. And if there's opportunities where there might be an extra 100,000 lying around, you know, you can, you can accelerate your purchase program and make a difference, okay? Next one, please. What are the, re what are the um, it said the um, rebates for the infrastructure rebates? Is that through the provincial government? Yeah, it's through Clean BC. Okay. So there's your, uh, and, and actually, we just had an email summarizing what all the rebates are. It's, it's going to be a tremendous amount of money to put the infrastructure in because Hydro has to up the service, probably a new service at the yard. Right. And then the chargers are fairly expensive. Mm -hmm. um, it's five hundred to seven hundred fifty thousand dollars for a store, probably half. Okay. So other, just there's a few little hints from up there, Tree. 
Um, the Gold Electric Bus Program um, is the one we applied to for buses, which is all coming through. Clean BC, which is really an arm of hydro. Uh, I've had success with them. Molly and I each have um, competing <laughs> requests then too. We're sort of racing each other. Who's going to get the, you know, get theirs approved first? And um, depending on what you're doing, there's different sources, whether you're getting infrastructure or vehicles or or trying to um, access this sort of thing. So there's different ones that we're exploring all of them. Next week, sure, yeah. So buildings, this is a big problem, right? This is our 60% uh, issue. So BC's electrification roadmap, they, they put this out there. It's a lot of pages that says fuel switch, electrify, and put in heat pumps, right? <laughs> so uh, here's another fancy chart of how we're doing. So plant LWT, the left column with all the Ys in it, do we have low water temperature boilers or condensing boilers? We are rocking it here, right? We're good. So that is the difference between the old boilers and the new is the efficiency is way higher in these new low water temperature ones. They push out water between 120 and 140 degrees. Uh, the old systems rock around 180, right? And they, they put an awful lot, 50% of it went out the flu as waste. So when you go one column over terminal low water temperature, there's all these inline systems that were built years ago that rely on that higher water. Most of those we have not upgraded. They still function with the lower water temperature, but they're not as efficient. But what we're playing is we electrify, they become a non-factor. The last three columns, 21, 22, 23, where new aging and the life, uh, we have no red on there. All of our heating systems in our schools are either in the green or light yellow, meaning we're in good shape, they're, they're new and quite efficient. So mechanically, if we, just, if we weren't going to be switching up to electric, we would be okay. But as we transition, we're in the most efficient possible situation it can be in your natural gas. Next one, please. So strategic priorities. Now is when we need to uh, really be level-headed about the decisions we make. So we look at the biggest emitters, the poor performers, the GHG reduction, like who's really burning the juice in these. And then finally, our maintenance issues or our, our, uh, our headaches. Right? So we blend all that information together to create a prioritized list for what we should be able to place. Uh, next one, please. So largest uh, large consumers, it's our high schools, Fannie is called Highland, 32% right there. Okay, they, they are one third. Uh, and this is from our 22, 23 data. Next in the line is Quinnish, right? So those, those high schools, they, they burn a lot of energy. Next. And then our four performers. So Cumberland, um, Strathcona, at the very top. That's one school we haven't updated because we're going to get this fancy, shiny expansion and we're going to completely change the heating system. <laughs> we're going to have a new window, new building envelope, and that number's going to get drilled out. So we're not worried about that one. Sandwick is tiny, Indigenous Ed, SPO. So we start looking at these and go, okay, of our schools, you know. What, what area is efficient? You can see there, man, it's not looking super efficient. Yeah. Other than Lake Trail, Human Valley View, you know, and they, they sort of roll down the west. Next, please. So we start crossing these over. Who's a big emitter? Who's not very efficient? And then we also have to add in greenhouse gas reduction and maintenance issues. So if we scoot over another slide, um, I Creech is pretty great for an elementary school, right? A lot of greenhouse gases. And one more in here. Um, just before we leave this, I, I don't put it in here, but it's about the ministry. And it's about us making a shift of not asking for a minor mechanical upgrade, but saying we need to spend a million to two and a half million dollars to completely transition our heating plant to meet these goals that aren't educational goals, right? But they're important provincial targets. How do we convince the ministry to do that? So I have a star by Kanish because it's a pretty big emitter. 
not super efficient, but it's achievable, right? It's a fairly modern school and it's got a big boiler room. So that's our first target because I want to prove to the ministry that we can electrify a school without paying a fortune and make a significant change before we tackle something like Vanity, where we're going to ask for a lot of help. So we want to prove our success. Next, please. So how do we pay for this? We had AFG funding, typically not enough in there to deal with a mechanical issue like this. Um, SEP is that school enhancement. That's a prime target, as is carbon neutral capital plan funding. Okay, next, please. Clean BC incentives. Get you a little bit of money. You get your project and you apply. We're always applying for ABC grants because you get 25, 30, or 40,000. Uh, let's just do something else to support this. Low carbon economy funds, 25 million. That's if we, uh, you know, this is out of our out of our reach, I would say, because you have to you have to pay for half. But that's where the feds will kill the wrong money. Okay, we'll roll on through this. Um, one more. So what have we done? So we have a lot of data. Just keep scrolling through these three, please. So we boiled or replaced in the in the last 12 years everything. So we're doing well. So electrification has started as well. Building control is done. LED lighting underway. Full LED lighting done in a bunch of schools. Vehicle transition has begun. So the big targets, we're, we're tackling all of them, not just putting all our energy into one place, we're spreading it out. Next, please. And the strategic energy management plan, this is this ongoing iterative plan about what are we need to do. Okay, so we know from this year we need 1% electricity and 10% of natural gas, which is really 852,000 equivalent kilowatts. Next one, three, please. So, how do we get there? RCX, and we'll talk about this in a sec, which is recommissioning or continuous <coughs> optimization. Fuel switching for demo and Quinish, we can do more than a million this year. All right, excellent. Please. Projects underway. So, Glacier View, this is a good one. We've got the PV array up there. Ads, that's a bonus for us. 6,000 kilowatt hours per month is what it should generate, which is about what we spend in the summer on electricity there. Um, and you know, so maybe maybe June through to September. Then the other months were quite a, quite a bit more, but we'll be uh, we'll be netting ourselves out for a few months. Then when we're electrifying. That uh, project starts this week. Um, Indians Way SBO. Gratitude to the board for uh, nodding up and down when we ask for a little more money to electrify. That's awesome. Continuous optimization. This is Hydro and Fortis. They help us to fix the niggly issues with things like our controls, right? So we look, so, so don't change your systems, just make them work right, right? So they are, so I applied to them for continuous optimization for every school, and we receive a grant for every school, full through funding. We pay out front, we get the money back as we complete the work. I just wanna show you the next slide. Um, and we each have an electrification project to press in. These are some of the things that went in on the capital plan. They're down in phase two, which is PVRA, controls at airport, hallway lighting, um, building envelope upgrade, really important because it makes the building warmer. So you don't have to heat as much. Um, some makeup areas for Vanier, which are very inefficient, and for each phase one electrification. It's so all, all requests in. Here's Glacier View, looks awesome. We had to do part of the roof, kind of ran out of money. Um, so I would have loved to have done the whole thing, but it was an add-in to make sure we had a new roof under it. Looks great and it's functioning. Next slide, please. This is the display that's inside the entrance. It shows you how much electricity you generate. Really cool. You can see the sunny days. Um, next one. Okay, recommissioning. So we're doing this at 19 sites. It'll be completed in May. There is a uh, this this, uh, this guy Marco Vieri is kind of a control savant, and he is going through all of our controls line by line. It's going to take basically a year. Uh, it's paid through Agro for this. A lot of it is the simple stuff like scheduling calendars, optimizing when we should start, and uh, doing a bunch of demand-based ventilation. Like if there's people there, add more air. If there's not, don't. 
Uh, at all these sites, next one, we could save 2.5 million kilowatt hours by doing this work, pretty much awesome. inside a year. Okay, next, I'm going to show you this. This is a great slide. The dark blue is electrical consumption by day from our smart meter at Quinesha Elementary. So the dark blue was last year, okay? And the light blue is this year after continuous optimization. See where the school year ended? July 1st. And then the light blue line goes all low because there's nobody in the school. The well, previous year stayed high. That's continuous optimization. Our electricity bills at a whole bunch of our schools this summer went down by 30%. That's amazing. Awesome. That's amazing. Super awesome. And that's, uh, that's they drill right in and look at the smart meter, see where the spikes are, go to the controls, go, well, why is that on? And why is that? So that's that's continuous optimization at a glance. And we have that story repeated through the district in numerous places. Last Christmas, just by shutting down over the holiday period, tremendous savings. Okay, next one. So a little bit of culture change. This was out of... Um, this is out of the Guardian in the UK. You know, we, we made the the honor generals were, were saying we're not going to make it. He's making international headlines. You know, as a very wealthy G7 country, um, we need to set an example, and we should do that at the local level as well. Next slide, please. One of the things that we're doing this year. Um, I'm not an educator, so I think our report card is now called the learning summary. <laughs> but I'm not really sure if we should send out a learning summary to the school. I thought, well, I'm operations. We're sending you a report card. <laughs> so we uh, sent a report card to all the schools last week on how well they did last year with their energy consumption. <laughs> this is a sample. We do a glossary on there to say, you know, here's some, uh, here's some terms, and here's some things you can do. Get people interested, but you know, turn off the lights in your classroom, power down the device you're not in use, limit the use of discretionary appliances for your smart boys, get out of here as well. You know, so there's some points in there. Next one. And then this is what we show the value elementary. Here's your historical performance. Um, and what your target should be. How many tons of greenhouse gases did you produce in the last 12 months? Where do we want you to go? How much electricity did you use? And then uh, next one, we show them relative to performance of them against the other elementary schools. So it's just info, you know, um, where do you sit? Like look at the electric schools on the far right there, Denman, Hornby, Perseverance, right? The greenhouse gas emissions, way, way lower. So we want that chart to go flat, straight across. Okay, so that, uh, and then we wanted to begin conversations because each school has an energy champion. I met with them last year. We got all excited about the things we can do. So we wanted to have information that they can use with their staff as well. Okay, next slide. So next steps for us, plans unfolding. We're, we're, we have to look at um, what's really tough for me is in this environment, we do not have a predictable flow of cash to resolve our issues. If you're a municipality, you can project your taxes out five years and go, your department's going to get this money. We have to apply every year, and we may or may not get funded. So we can have the world's best plan, but if Quinnish electrification does not get funded, that work is not happening, right? Unless, as a board, decide that you know, we're going to pull this big chunk of money out. And in the competing demands of education, I don't see that as reasonable, right? We rely on ministry funding, which is not predictable. So that's the biggest barrier for us. So we're going to continually have to update our plan. So we keep requesting projects, and that's why I want this Quinish one to work. We can do that one for under a million. So divided into two pieces, sliced at kind of 450, you know, should be really palatable. We want a clean decarbonization plan, and let's keep plugging away at that. Continuous optimization right through to May. Awesome work. We'll see beautiful results from that. And uh, annual reporting. How do we do? We send a report card to schools. Our report card is the happy, the sad, or the flat faces, right? We're hoping we see lots of happy faces. 
Um, yeah. That's that picture from from Palace. I mean, I just love it, right? Mm -hmm. This is the this is the feel good stuff. Uh, spending money in a different way around our uh, improvements, culture changes. A lot of trees planted at Isfeld this year. A bunch of trees at Courtney now. We're really looking at those southern exposures and going, let's let's get trees in variety shade. Let's get we've got pretty much window film on all our southeast exposures. We're doing work in the Valley View Forest right now as well. We balance off all of that with this kind of bricks and mortar work too, because we want the kids to be excited about it. So they carry our message. So really for us, how are we gonna get there? We're gonna split, we're gonna we're going to over the next eight years, which is what we have to hit the 2030 target, because we've just reported on the 22, is we're gonna electrify and we're gonna change lighting on LED. If we do finish over two years, and then we do is fill over two years and van me over two years, we hit our targets, right? And then we can hit Highland, you know, over two years. Will we get all that funding? But we can meet a 2030 target by doing that. And I think that is something that is should be um, should be achievable and certainly is something that we can create the reports and data for um, and do the engineering on and manage those projects. So so that's our plan. And that will get us there. We just are reliant upon a funding stream from a province that isn't necessarily in a funding sense. So that's where those letters that help comes around. You know, what is where do we, you know, we're always looking for ways to improve. And, you know, for us, it's having that predictable funding stream to address these issues in order for us to meet their targets. That's it. Say something. We're working on 10 minutes. Oh, my. Wow. Why is it Yeah. Well, thank you so much sure. for that. Um, that's great. Um, I'm wondering, open floor to questions. Christine, do you want I to got start? so many, but I'm just going to stick with a few. So, sure. from everything that I've heard, then, from one of the critical issues is funding, advocacy for funding for electrification is kind of the bottom underlying thing that I heard is that if if the ministry can get that funding for the electrification, then there's a possibility for us to meet our greenhouse gas emissions. Now, because that's reliant on them, you know, and if we don't meet that because we haven't got the funding, like, so how does that work? Do you know what I'm saying? Because it's... So we make this as part of our annual capital plan submission. Right. Right, which we did with Fringe. Yeah. So we're going to continue to do that. They generally don't approve everything on your wish list. Right. Right. So that, that piece of it is, so we made our submission. And I think the, the interesting advocacy part is... Greenhouse gas reductions look different in all the different parts of the province. So it, it's kind of a, to me, it's more generic around initiatives, funding for initiatives that support greenhouse gas reduction. Gotcha. Right? Because it could be different in different places. Right. You know, depending where you are in the province. So for us, it's it's really all about electrification. And that's we can, it, it works for our climate and it's, uh, it's projects we can do. But the data one's really interesting. We're, we're out to tender for that. It's closed. The work will be done probably over winter break. And then we'll be into a modernized electrified school. And the mechanical engineer I've been working with on the project was he was he's almost misty about it. He goes, this is the future. You know, this is, you know, ERVs are us. Yes. And um, it's, it's again, it's a, an easy one. And then we transition to something like when each before we really have to make once. But that adds advocacy for funding according to their targets. Yeah, because yeah. I feel like we could get penalized for not getting the funding from the ministry. Um, and then is there any other things that they factor into our 
um, into our reductions, like all the tree planting that we're doing, the garden spaces, these are things that in, um, in other parts of the world are starting to get quantified for greenhouse gas emissions and carbon reduction. Is that something that's even been discussed or no? What I think is it's triple what you wish for. Right? <laughs> it's honestly because what I see out of the province is they're keeping it simple and I'm actually liking that. Okay. Because they haven't gone after things like, well, what about business travel? You know, which sure. has a significant carbon footprint. What about all the people that drive to work? You know, like they have not gone for what I consider a little sort of ancillary things and they're sniffing around about that. So I'd rather not ask about the trees we find. <laughs> and you know, like yeah. you keep it really simple to the big to the big issues. But you're right. Yeah, and those I think are again are a responsibility for us. Yeah. To do that work. Awesome. Thank you guys. Um thank you for slowing things down a little bit here and there too. Like when you said your everyday cue sum, I went and then you said cumulative summary and I went eight Um the one thing I am curious about out, just for a moment outside our walls is in the broader <coughs> idea of climate change, like what what actually happens? Is there a process with um when 650 lights are changed at value or something like like what is what happens to we sort of look at what can be recycled, what can be whatever is their donation process? I was just wondering. That's but, good because there it, it honestly depends on what we are taking out. Um, yeah. we have very few ballasts that still have PCBs in them. We used to have to have big barrels to collect the lighting ballast. Because it had PCD <coughs> metal, we take them apart. So our tubes go to the recycling. We take all our tubes to the recycle area, and we get a metal bin in and separate the metal on our light fixtures. So we honestly do the best we can on those, um, and we don't want to introduce back to the system. So we, we, we make them inoperable because they're just inefficient. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yes. Yeah. I um, thank you all for the, for the work and for the presentation um, where I uh, like the report card. I think that is really great. So that how uh, how does the school know how to do and I really appreciate that and then they can see how they can reach out of people. I wanted to to just maybe comment a little bit of Christy's question about what if we don't get the money and the advocacy and when when our district um, when we did our presentation for the Select Planning Committee in June that was there were three areas we spoke to and one of them was about needing more funding for the electric, electrification and and the um, MLAs were very curious it was really interesting to hear the kinds of questions they had the information that I had to be able to answer not all of the questions but quite a few but that multiple people ahead of me um, were talking about similar kinds of things in terms of heat pump and electrification not not for school district um because they were they weren't in that queue but it was really interesting how when we spoke about the advocacy how interested that organized that committee is which is which is created to help form budget and the questions they were asking about well how much does it cost when, when i was sharing with the information that, that you provided for the district to use how much it costs to electrify the school versus how much money we get annually just carved to that specific area mm -hmm. and all the other asks that we have to make in order to make that happen so it multiple ways to 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 do that advocacy um and then the creativity of asking all the different ways yeah i just wanted to share that it was yeah it was really that opportunity where the MLAs can ask questions during the select standing committee of MS and government governance showed that they were as interested in some of this as we were trying to convey our ask. It's getting nice. I think the other side effect of this and is that you know it's a lot of electricity to do the system. So one of the things that we've done in the last year or two is we've assessed every main electrical service. Because if you go and electrify a school and then there's not enough juice to run it, that's a real problem because it takes a year to do a electrical service. So now we now have an engineered survey of every electrical service. So we know if we're asking whether we need to upgrade the system. 
we've got kind of a batting order for that on as well. It's, it's an important piece is that, like you said, there's fall on, you know, you do something and then it has these, like the PV array on the roof, yeah, the unintended consequence was we had to replace the roof. Yeah. Because you don't want to put it on an old roof. No. You know, so that there's, um, there's the project fee and then the other thing. Sergey, you have a question? Sergey, you have a question? Okay. You're next on my list. Yeah. Um, one thing that I was wondering about, and I, I don't know if it just wasn't in our in the summary, or maybe it wasn't. I just wasn't paying attention. But is this building? Like, I've heard like over and over so many times about this building. It's very poor. Being such a nightmare. Yeah. Do we have like a little bit of a a plan for for this building, or are we kind of waiting? to see like exactly, like I know that there is some talk about what's meant to be happening here, but. So the bevy is very poor because it's it's a poor performer. So the, the consumption level is low. Okay. Right, so it's a poor performer. So it, it's down the list, so it's to be worked on. We basically have 35 year old sort of hotel heater coolers okay. in all the offices. It's occupied all year. It just lends itself to inefficiency. So we would look at electrifying this building, but it would be in down in the list of priorities. Yeah. Okay. It's up there. And then something that just does a quick little tag along, something that I thought was an interesting comment that I just heard. How effective do you think that that will window filming is in some of the buildings as far as like preserving some of the Integrity of the it's actually we've got it on every southeast exposure. We started with the second floors because mm -hmm. you know we we kind of change warmer in May and June mm -hmm. and September, and we're just you know it's overbearing, mm -hmm. it's overwhelming in those classrooms, and it provided an element of relief. Yeah, you have to you have to have, so you have the if you have the window film, if the blinds are down in the morning when the sun is streaming yeah. in. And the correct use of the windows being open for possible ventilation, you can sort of survive. Yeah. You know, but you have to throw all the pieces together. Yeah. Right. Just, have, it was just curious to me. We did house. that at my house, and yeah. I live on that cut block in Cumberland. Yeah. And my house gets like full sun in every window from one o'clock till sundown. Yeah. Plus, I have blinds, plus, I have bamboo on the outside, plus, I have window foam, and we have a heat pump. And it's like yeah. the window phone works. I was just yeah. wondering if the like, yeah, commercial kind of, level of it's yeah. actually had yeah. any impact. It's cool that it does because it's an inexpensive mm -hmm. way to solve mm -hmm. a bit of a problem that's pretty mm -hmm. severe. Yeah. Well, first, yeah, thank you. It's what, what a thorough and excellent presentation. I, I think uh, I just wanted to comment uh, more than a question, which is, you know, I know that aspirational and it's almost an artificial lowering, which is nice and smooth. Um, but just acknowledging when you started, you talked that this is more than greenhouse gas reduction, and it's connected to climate change. And climate change is actually causing demands that are going in the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. So when we have you know incredible heat domes, or we have you know 25 degree November days and 35 degree May days, that while we're trying to lower greenhouse reductions, the actual need has increased year by year because of those uh, extremes that we're seeing in the climate. So, you know, I, I just really appreciate the ambitious nature, but just wanted to articulate some of the complexity and actually arriving at 2030 as an intended outcome. If you don't mind, mm -hmm. just a couple of quick ones. Um, the continuous optimization program, is that a one-year program or is that an ongoing? You basically, it's more of a, you apply by sight, and it takes as long as it takes, really. And so, just given the number of sites, it's sort of added up to a year. But that's more happenstance than anything else, just because the allocate say each each site takes two to three weeks to complete. So it is really um, per site. So I apply for all at the same time, and we're approved for all. So it just now happens sequentially. Yeah, and really, uh, Ready Engineering, who which is the company that Marco works for. Yeah, I mean, it's just been such a huge help because once you get the approval, it basically takes the documents out of your hand and does the work to keep you updated. And he works um, really closely with our heating staff so that they're in the loop and there's just great communication. He's come and done a bunch of site visits as well. 
I'm also curious how long um, you've been doing people report cards to the schools. That seems like a great idea. I think that would be about a week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's that's great. That is a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was number one. And now, to be fair, uh, I, I would say like Tree did a lot of work on it, and um, we had a lot of iterations going back and forth. We we opted not to send it till we had because we were going to be sending it to twenty one, twenty two information. Mm -hmm. We thought, oh, you know, because we, we wanted to send it for the first of September, mm -hmm. but we wouldn't have the data. So we said, well, as soon as we get the data, we'll send it. But there was a lot of a lot of sort of Googling around as to what the this should look like and what the wording should be like. Yeah. So I have one last question, mm -hmm. and, and it relates to um, your comments about advocacy. I know at the municipal level, there's kind of discussion around um, property assessed clean energy, where people can um, borrow against property taxes or add it to their property taxes, and then re to, to it's almost like a, a loan. And then, then you repay it through the savings that are generated mm -hmm. on an ongoing basis. Do you think that would have any um, utility within a school district context? <laughs> I, just don't, I think the volume of dollars is so high. Okay. You know, and you need the money up and up front. Mm -hmm. So you know the because the home heat pump is kind of nine to sixteen thousand, depending on how big it is, and for us we're you know, a million to 2.5. So, I mean, I love the idea of us doing that because, you know, those cumulative savings, they, you know, I'd be happy if we could do something like that, but I'm not sure. We had, um, Tree and I had a very good meeting with the city of Courtney. They have a manager of engineering for environmental projects, you know, and a technician associated. And they're really at the beginning of the beginning. They haven't even started really collecting their data yet. We had a great discussion because I met them in cameras, you know, and, and they're we're sharing um, because you know everybody has good ideas and they're putting uh, air quality monitors on all our schools for us. So then they're gonna the city of Courtney is gonna collect that information. So we've got some collaborative things, but we really live in two different worlds from a farming model. Mm -hmm. that, that was really clear after our meeting. Um, we've also connected with the CBRD. They have a new coordinator of energy projects, and um, we're going to start talking about things like how could we take heat from the cooling of the ice rink at Vanier and maybe pipe that through to Vanier. Mm -hmm. You know, so there's, there's, we're, um, I think, broadening our net as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I actually got a, was on that little tour when you got shown around that and the, the guy was kind of telling us that that was like a little bit of an idea that somebody had had like yeah. last year, I think. Yeah. Wasn't that last year? You're talking about it for the hospital and for the years yeah. ago. Yeah. And then it's a really yeah. cool idea. I was yeah. up on the roof of the, of the rink checking yeah. it out, looking at what was what. Nice. There. Yeah. The guy was stoked and he kept a very tiny. See, right down into the big scene. Yeah, I saw everything. <laughs> it's just like I saw it with my little eye, but it was really cool. It's a cool idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much, and all, all three of you for yes. having and supporting the presentation you. tonight with all the hard work mm -hmm. you're doing. It's oh, really, really that. appreciated. Yeah, thank you. It's these two. Yeah, we very much appreciate yeah, the support. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Ian. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That takes us to the end of our agenda. If someone would like to move the agenda, yeah. so, yeah. so, yeah. so, yeah. so, yeah. so, yeah. that was awesome. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, so you know, our organization is a housing support.